So finally, here is the follow-up video that I said I would do to this Sato sucker back in... Was it June? I don't remember. <laughs> it was in uh, July or June or something like that when I got it, and I said, oh, well, I'll follow up. So far, it seems to be working, and I did a little quick demonstration on an old DVD player. Uh, yeah, it still works remarkably. It still has the same suction. The, the pump hasn't failed yet, knock on wood, eh? And um, it just works well. Uh, every single video in the... So, like, all of my modification videos, in the description, there is a... Um, a link that you can have your console modified by me. It doesn't get a lot of traffic and I don't advertise it much because I don't really want a lot of traffic, but I'm gonna say it right here just to sort of put a case scenario here. I've used it for every single modification that someone submitted. I, it's not much, I get about five every month, which isn't much. And the majority of them are GameCube HDMI modifications, but that's besides the point. So I'm using this pretty much every single modification, taking out pins and whatnot to solder in those modifications. And it's served very well. Uh, it gets uh, regular use, and I clean it out. You just pull it back as usual, and you take this off. And I suppose we'll begin with this, shall we? We'll talk about what, how, what I like about this and what I don't like about this. So, unlike the Hacko models, if I remember correctly, um, this one has a weird system in which there's a metal plate at the back and the air escapes around it, and then it's just on the top. You can see where all the garbage gathers in there. And, um, I don't know whether I like this, the solder sticks to this, and I will, I'll show you that in just a second here. Let's zoom in to the ground here, and if I go to try to get the solder out, it's still, uh, it's still kind of stuck in there. So it's, it's not really coming out, you have to scrape it out. It's not well designed that way, because the solder is obviously going to heat up, and then this is going to act as a heat sink, and it's going to reform to that. So, kind of a poor design. But the benefit of this is you don't change your filter very often, whereas the Hacker ones, they give you a lot of filters and you have to change them very frequently. This one, I've only changed once just before the review. Here's the old one. Let me get it out here. So this is after so many months of use. That's all it's gotten touched on it. I could probably keep using it, honestly. And they only give you three of these. So, there's that. I don't know how many... Uh, you would go through, depending on your work use case, but they only give you three of them. I would say though, and they're easy to take out, I'll show you how you take them out right here. See how you take it out. There we so I usually just use a pair of tweezers, I just pinch the middle or the sides, and you just pull it out like that, put it back in. And you definitely want that there, some of the excess will go through, but for the most part it does get stopped at that metal holder. Um, Either way, from the looks of it though, it's really just a piece of cotton. Just a piece of cotton, but I wouldn't want to use just stray cotton balls because those would probably get stuck in there and they'd be terrible. What I would recommend if you run out of these filters is I'm probably going to recommend that you know those, um, those ones you can get, those cotton pads you can use for makeup. Don't know why I know this, but you can pad them on your face. And um, basically you can use a hole punch. I, I would think that you could use a hole punch on one of those and just put them in. I don't know if that would work, that's just an idea that just came to mind before making the video. Either way, you have to scrape this out, that's one problem. And here's the second problem I have with this, is because it is so... Oop, there we go, see how it's focused? Um, because it is so... not a brand at all, just someone made it in their backyard, I guess, um, there aren't any real tips. I know that somebody's linked, you can get different tips for this. Um, uh, there's only like two varieties, it's like slightly bigger and slightly smaller. So there's really not a, a lot of options for tips to this. Um, so you're kind of out of luck there. And they're kind of expensive and they take forever to get here. So really you've only got one option for a tip. It's... I don't have my... I don't have my precision thing, but it, it seems like a... I would guess it's about two millimeters in uh, inner diameter. But uh, either way... I mean, it's what you get. It works for most applications. I've used it on the smaller things like GameCube, but like a bigger pin. Now let's get an example here. Let's see if we can get an example. Do do do. There's one. Sorry about this delay. So I've got like a board right here, and some of these really big pins, like those right there, it has a hard time going over top of because they're too large. It just it's not going to fit over that at all. So that would be a case where you'd want to get a larger one, but they really don't sell them. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention is the temperature. The temperature, like every other um, 
Chinese manufactured or knockoff manufactured uh, soldering iron is not very good. Uh, mine is the same. I really need to get a new soldering iron. I realized it today actually more than anything when I'm using my lead free solder which isn't very good. Um, I really need to get a new soldering iron because it's just not carrying the heat and the same with this one. I have it up to 410. You should really only have to have it at about 350. Uh, like a, a good weller would just it would just move the heat but it's just there's such a little I don't know how it's built but it, it just doesn't hold the heat very well so um, you have to turn it up really high to really get that melting point so if you do get like a ground plane like a big ground plane I find that oftentimes you have a hard time getting it to melt with this you gotta sort of hold it there for a while and it, kind of, and it finally will desolder it and you can suck it up but uh, if you get something like that, it, it can take a long time. You have to turn it up all the way and it's just like blinking. That's one of the biggest issues I have with this is that it's just, sometimes it just doesn't get quite hot enough. Um, but over time, overall, it's got a very nice feel. I don't know, it feels like the genuine ones. It does. Um, it feels genuine. It's got a nice click right there. The knob, I don't like the knob at all, the temperature knob at all. I wish it was more like, I don't know what I wish it was. I wish it was almost like a slider or something, but I, I just don't like this knob, it's stupid. Um, but it's what you get for, it's only $100. Uh, and it works well. It works well for very basic applications. If you're just a hobbyist, and uh, so like myself, and you're just wanting to desolder a few things here and there, and you get a, a lot of through hole applications, like this is perfect. This little board with all of the, uh, zoom in here, oops. This little board right here with all the buttons, this would be perfect. This would just go over top, and it would take out those buttons, no problem. If you got that kind of thing, no worries. But if you're gonna be taking out VGAs after V, it would probably do a VGA pretty well too, but you're gonna have problems with certain ground planes like those, where it really takes a lot of heat to sink into them. It just doesn't have the force there to do it. Um, but it is very, very useful. Um, but if you're using it all the time like I am, I'm considering myself probably eventually getting a, uh, a more higher end version, one of the name brands. Same with my soldering iron, I gotta replace this. This has been around too long, it's not really working as it should anymore, really. <laughs> Either way, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a short video, it still works. Those are the few little quirks. Do I recommend it? Yeah, if you're a hobbyist and you, and you want, if you use this type of thing a lot, you're really tired of the braid, because the braid can be a real nightmare sometimes. Um, this can work really well. It works exceptionally well for $100. Um, but if you're going to use it a lot all the time, like I find myself using this a lot all the time, I would consider myself someone who should probably upgrade. So, there you have it. That's all there is to it. I hope you find this somewhat useful, and I'll see you next time. I'll, oh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cut myself off. Um, right after this, I'll put a little bit of footage of uh, me desoldering a keyboard. You can watch that video right after this. Oh, and before you berate me in the comments, yes, I do know that you're supposed to take this little rubber cap out to take the solder off. It's still stuck to here. It's, you have to scrape it off. That's my point, is it should just fall out of this. Um, yeah, just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> All right. Now, a smart idea for this too is you could apply a bunch of, oof, I almost cut myself. You could apply a bunch of flux on this board. I'd recommend it. Uh, just, if you've got flux in the jar, just, just cover it. All the pins, all these LEDs, I'd recommend doing that. That's a smart idea. But I'm being a dumbass and going ahead and uh, just doing it. Some of these are a little bit not quite there, you know what I mean? I'm gonna clean this off, just tin the tip a little bit here with some solder. It's getting a little, getting a little bit dirty. I don't know if you're supposed to do this with this type of thing, but I like to keep it clean by putting it into the steel wool-like mixture. Just brushing it off and getting it nice and shiny. Keeping it preserved. Oh, yeah, that's part of the problem, isn't it? There we go.